So where are we at? Oh, we're in my studio, <laughs> in my art studio, Paulo Diaz art studio. But yeah, and I got my little space here, and it's um, this is it. This is my little working space. And um, these are all your paintings. Yeah, these are all my paintings. <clears throat> I yeah, these are all my paintings. Stuff that I've been working on. None of it is really f completely finished, but when is a painting ever finished? I guess no, they could be finished. Yeah, like yeah. Like I never thought this one was gonna be finished, and it's and it's wanted to be finished, and it's still not finished though. <laughs> but it's telling me that it needs to be finished. It is finished. This is like this is the latest one that I that I that I've been working on. Did you do um, board graphics for any of your pro models? Yeah, I did. Um, during chocolate, I did a couple of I did a couple of them, but. Um, the, the the first ones like the first the, the best ones the uh, uh, my brother did them, and then um, I remember doing a couple of them, but I guess uh, yeah yeah I don't know um, like one or two. I always wanted to do more of my graphics, but I was I never got a chance to 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 make more graphics. Um, all right, do you want to, let me set up real quick. Can you show me that, um, that card that's right there, that photo? Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, this is crazy. This card right here. This is Paul Peralta days. Look at my hair. I have dreads, dude. I have dreads. This is like 88, 89, the latest. And I have dreadlocks. And I was listening to dub reggae. They told me they called you Pablo. Like, like certain people <laughs> said, when I first heard him, I thought his name was Pablo. Guy Mariano. Yeah, dude. I, I thought my name was Pablo. <laughs> what do you mean? Because everybody called me Pablo. Even my mom to, even my mom to this day, for some reason, still calls me Pablo. But uh, uh, they named me after a soccer player. In, 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 his name was Paulo. And it's in my, it's in my birth certificate, Paulo. But for some reason, people call me Pablo, even to this day. And that's even why I do art, because Pablo Picasso, you know, that's what I grew up with, you know. So I remember I, I, they probably called me Pablo because I told them my name was Pablo. <laughs> Will you hold that photo up for, I want to take a picture. That's cool. What's that trick called? That's a melon, a <laughs> melon collie, a backside melon. Oh, that you're the fakie. The fakie. Oh, I thought you were one. I thought you were one footing. No, no, no. It's just a backside yeah. melon to fakie. Cool. <laughs> yeah, dude, but my dreads were perfect right there. Oh man, and then they grew out too long, and then they just was, I had to cut them. This is my instrument. This is oh my god, is there a hole? Oh, no. This is like my main instrument that I play. I play, I play a lot of instruments. I play guitar. I play everything. But this, for some reason, I I spend all my time playing this instrument. And it's 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 probably and it's like the hardest freaking instrument ever. And what are they? What is it called? It's called the tabla, tabla, and it's from India. And um, it's a drum, but you tune it. You can tune it up to notes. Let me see. I'm gonna tune it up right. Now. You can tune it up. This is a note, an actual note. Yeah, you, and you tune this instrument right here. Yeah, this is the, the, the my new instrument. It's called a tabla. Like like a like like board in Spanish. You say tabla 
for like a board, like a skateboard. And we actually called, I mean, we, in, in Spanish, we actually call the skateboard, we call it a tabla, tabla. And it's the same word in India, but in India it means this. So I don't know, maybe there's a connection right there with skating and <laughs> maybe that's why I play this instrument so much. Or this instrument, you could sit down and play this instrument for 24 hours and it won't be enough a day, like 12 hours a day and it won't be enough. Like you, you only get better and better. And then, this is not the good one, uh, the, my good one, I, I fucking, I was practicing too much and I made a hole in it, so I, <laughs> alright. In this instrument, um, to learn how to play it, you have to learn that there's like a vowels, there's like a, 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 a word for, a verb for every, for every sound, like, like to make a beat, be like, da, 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 da. a solo instrument. There's a lot of soloing with it too. What other instruments do you bring? Um, yeah, this is—it's it's, it's insane. This instrument is so frustrating because you can't really tell how hard it really is. <laughs> yeah, it sounds amazing. Uh, literally, um, oh, I brought this. I brought these, but I don't know. I guess like I don't know if I even want to play anymore. Because, well, I'll play whatever. I don't know. I'm is that the same thing as in? Oh no, you're playing a flute in the chocolate portrait. Yeah, that's a flute. Yeah, it's this this flute right here.
Yes, yes, yes. I, I don't know, I haven't been practicing enough. And, but this is another cool instrument too. Wait on. Let me play this one better. I can't even play right now. I'm not, I'm not in the mood. I gotta. It's okay. I'm like working on beats, like hip hop beats and stuff like that, and like just psychedelic beats. So, um, what do you think? So, before you rode for Chocolate, what were some of the companies you skated for? Um, before I rode for Chocolate, I skated for, um, first it was Paul Peralta, and then it was, it was Paul Peralta, and then it was, um, it was blue for like a minute with stereo, I mean, with now with, with uh, Chris Pastris and Jason, uh, Jason Lee. It was blue, and then that ended, and then that ended really quick. Cause then there was other, um, there was other uh, things. Go uh, there was another company th that was being talked about in progress, which is Stereo. And then yeah, you had Stereo. Ad. I remember Stereo ad. Yeah, Stereo ads were were yeah. That was before Chocolate, and then that was after Paul Peralta. I was kind of just searching around what I was gonna do after Paul Peralta, because Paul Peralta got stale really quick. Yeah. It, it, and uh, um, what was I going to say? Um, uh, in York? Oh, yeah, dude. It was so funny. Um, for like a couple of months, I skated for 101. Yeah. <laughs> With Gabriel. Because uh, that's, that's who I was talking to. It was Gabriel and I that kind of got stayed, be, that stayed behind a little bit. And, and, and um, because it, it was the four of us. It was Gabriel, Rodriguez, Guy Mariano, and Rudy Johnson and I that got into the business together, you know? So we kind of were like, you know, like a little team, you know? And it was funny because that's how even, how, that's even how we got on Powell. Cause we got on Powell because of uh, Gabriel. Gabriel was the one that they were gonna interview. Pa Stacy Peralta was the one that was gonna sponsor Gabriel. But then Gabriel showed up with Guy Mariano, with, with Rudy Johnson and me. And then, so then uh, Stacy was like, damn, like it's, it's four of them, it's not just Gabriel. And then they kind of, uh, Stacy Prata just kind of gave us her own little deal, like sponsored us and made us like, you know, like a little, like, you know, like a little movement th that we were, you know, we were the LA kids of, of, of the four of us. So then, um, so then uh, uh, Guy, Guy Mariano and Rudy Johnson quit Powell and Gabriel. And then that's how, then that's when Blind started, and then that's how the, you know, and then that, after that is when Girl started, and then that's how we started coming about, but. Yeah, how, we're, um, when Rudy and Guy started were on Girl, were you and Gabriel, like, wishing you were on Girl? Or did you, were you like, well, how did you feel about those guys being on Girl first? Yeah, it was a trip because those guys being on Girl first, it was a trip because we were all together. We were either skating together, and then you know, World Industries. And I got on Blind. Did I just say that? I, did I say that I got on Blind? Oh no, I didn't even mention Blind. I skated for Blind too. I skated for everybody almost, and in the beginning. But I skated for Blind for a, like a year or two before, after, um, after, after Blue, and then Stereo, and then Blind, 
and then I got on blind because because of the because I wanted to be close to Guy and World Industries and 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 you know, and and I wanted to be close to Rudy, so I got I went towards that way. But then they quit. That's when they quit, girl. So then we got I got stuck on blind, with just and then Gabriel was on 101 and then, but it was just it wasn't like it, it was we did feel left behind, you know. So that's kind of how, that's where chocolate started. That's where you know where. Where, um, where, yeah, basically Gabriel and I, we were just like, dude, we got to do something. Like, we got, you know, we were kind of like bummed. We were like, you know, <laughs> so we, I, you know, we were skating. I was skating really good. And I remember, like, I skated for any company that I wanted back then. Like, right after I skated for Ch right after I skated for Powell, I quit Powell. And I could skate for anybody. Like, anybody that I either hit up or they hit me up. And I ended up skating for, like, blind, like, fucking stereo this and that so then that's how chocolate came about because because um uh what was going on back then which is what i do, what i'm finally realizing now it, what was going on back then was the the schoolyards you know the like you know los Feliz and and lockwood like you know i didn't really realize till now how how much of an important part those two those two schools really had to do with our career and even just skating you know, like street skating itself, you know, like everybody and their grandmother was showing up to Las Feliz and Lockwood, you know, and, uh, um, and, um, and I remember, um, I remember Las Feliz was just too crowded, dude. I remember it got too crowded. I remember there was days where just like Tony Hawk and Steve Caballero, everybody like was just there, there in one day, you know, so we as the LA skaters back then we kind of didn't like that you know we didn't like that everybody was coming to LA and skating our stuff you know but you know but um it's what made it's, it's what made us it's what made me you know it's like it's like the skateboard world came to our backyard you know because we were skating these schools and that's how I came about and that's why I was so good because I was skating these schools I was the first one to skate these schools and these schools had fucking the best hips and then you know it was a trip even Lockwood like they try to remodel Lockwood like, like 20 times, and they only made it better every time. Is it, how insane was that? You know, like they try to just stop skating every, every time they made a new hip or they made a new something, the school would come and try to break it up, and they would make a new thing to skate every single time. So that's how it happened. That's how um, that's how chocolate happened. That's how it happened right there in the, at Lockwood, you know? And, and there was Gabriel and I and Rudy and, um, and um, yeah, you know, and... Hold on. Was it, um, but, so whose idea was it? Was it Rick and Mike? No, Chocolate was my idea from the beginning. It was my, it was, because I was skating so good and then I wanted to, I felt, I remember, at least from my part, from the part that I remember, I was like the, 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 you know, like the force, the energy of chocolate because, you know, everybody was coming to Lockwood, everybody was coming to Las Feliz, and then, um, and then, and then what do you call it, um, Gabriel and I, we were talking about this and we just, it was a trip because back then, you know, skating was different. It was like, you know, you could start a company like, or it was just, you know, companies, you, when you skated for somebody, it was a handshake, you know, like from what I remember because we were so, so young. It would just be like a handshake and you're actually skating for somebody, you know, like when I skated for Blind, when I skated for World, when I skated, it was just like I said yes or they asked me and we, before I know it, there's boards out and we're getting paid and, you know, and it just happened, you know, so like that's how, that's how chocolate started, you know, because cause of how I saw that happen. I, I remember um, the name chocolate, it came from, um, from because back then um, I had a... Um, a, a, I had a, a band, we had a band, it was called Candy Low Life, a rock and roll band. And then what do you call it? Um, and that's what I was thinking, you know, I was like, I want to, well, I want to start, a, we could start a company. And I was telling Rudy, because I saw everybody, you know, Rick and Howard and Mike Carroll, they were coming to, 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 uh, to Lockwood, you know. And then I saw how good I was skating and I saw how I had power, you know. So I told Rudy, I remember this like yesterday, I told Rudy, I was like, Rudy, dude, tell Rick, and tell, tell Rick and Mike, dude, that we're ready. Like, we fucking Gabriel and I, and this will talk, we want to start a company. Tell them to start a company just like they did for Girl and you guys. You know, and then, um, and it happened. And it, and it just, and it just happened. And then what he called, um, 
And then, you know, every, it just, it was such a good idea and we were skating so good that the company just went off and just, it became, you know, it just started. Who were the original writers? The original writers were um, Keenan Milton, Gino Iannucci, um, Gabriel Rodriguez, Chico Brenes, I, Mike York, Shamil, and Ben Sanchez, right? Yeah, that was, that was the, the original team. And uh, what was Shamil skating like? We all had style. I remember, like, we all were skating good. We were all just street dogs, like, dope street skating, you know? Didn't, we didn't need much but just the streets to just skate and do, you know, a small curb and, you know, or a picnic table. You know, a lot of it was even just done on a picnic table, you know? So that's what we were doing back then. We were just, like, it was just raw dog, like, dope street skating, you know? Did you try to come up with... Um new tricks because a lot of like it seems like in, during that time period a lot of the skaters not in this crew but just in the world were pretty cookie cutter like these are the cool tricks this is the cool way to dress anything else isn't cool do you know what i mean or isn't the do right? you mean back then like back then in the 90s early are you 90s, saying that that's how it was back then not i'm saying worldwide skating and i'm saying that it seemed like you did different tricks than a lot of other people. You did some tricks that other people did. Yeah, yeah. But there were a lot of moves to this day that were like, you know, I don't know, that we hadn't, you hadn't seen before. It wasn't just Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I did that a lot. I, uh, there was a lot of that. Even, even just with Gino Iannucci, like, you know, even though it was tech, it was, you know, like, even he just, like, came out. I actually, uh, Chocolate and uh, Keenan Milton, like, switch heel flips over the picnic table like that wasn't nobody was doing even like thinking of that you know yeah. so yeah like back then it was a lot of room for that and um so how did, how did you progress into your style of skating that some of the tricks were a little different and then also it seemed like you did nollies and switch before a lot of people like how did yeah. you think of doing oh yeah damn that's a trick was well, like switch people used to do nollies like like 90 degree, like if I nollied up a curb, it would be like 90 degree nollie. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then I remember you had ones that were like straight. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I used to actually try to do that. I was like, I would go out of my way to make sure that it's like straight over, you know? <laughs> Where did you pick up those tricks or how did you? Okay, okay, yeah. Out? Those tricks was a trip because, um, because um, you wouldn't even believe it. If you knew me when I was a kid, you would know. Like when I was a kid, like even in Powell days, cause I was an artist. And then I remember when Stacy Peralta like first sponsored me, he liked that about me. You know, he liked that I was an artist and that I was already painting in oils and like, and that I would have, that I had all these weird little tricks that I would do. I remember Stacy, like he liked that about me. So I kind of did that. And then, and then, um, but I remember like back then there was a point where I would just skate everywhere. I was just skating everywhere and I remember um, that um, I would do it to get strong, to get my legs buff, right? <laughs> and then one time, I remember I noticed that one of my legs was too buff, was 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 stronger than the other leg. So then, like, I was like, damn, you know, like my calf, the whole thing. <laughs> so that's how I started pushing switch, you know. And then I actually started skating switch before I even knew what switch was, even not because because I was trying to invent switch tricks, but because just my legs, just the way I think, you know, I saw my leg, one was stronger than the other one. So then I started pushing like Mongo, you know, but I actually started pushing switch and I remember I would skate, back then I would just skate switch and just, just do like, like cruising, you know, like, like uh, what do you call that, like slalom or whatever, switch so I could learn how to skate backwards. And then, um, and this is like even before I was, what I, before I even knew how to nollie, but there was one kid, that I didn't even pay attention to, just from a weird random kid, dude. Uh, his name's Caesar. You, I don't know. Some people know him, but th this kid was from Glendale, like back in the day, like back in the day before anybody. And I remember he was trying switch tricks. I didn't even know what he was trying, but I remember somehow it must have been him that was trying weird switch, just trying to do be the weirdest kid he could be. And he was actually trying nollie flips, like in dude, in like '87. Like, dude, this and this is like. It was like 87, even earlier, he was trying nolly, nolly flips. And then nobody ever, I never saw anybody try that again for like 10 years, you know? 
So I guess maybe because I grew up with this kid, I was already nollying, you know? So when nollies actually started becoming in style, I already knew how to nollie, you know? Like somehow I already knew how to skate switch and I could just, you know, nollie quick. It was, I don't even remember nollying. I just knew how to nollie. And then, you know, and then like, that's how nollie came about. And then, and then Lockwood was there. And then I don't even know, dude, I swear. Didn't I, nollies, nollies used to have different names? Like Chinese people? ollies. Yeah, it was like it was. It came from a Chinese ollie or a fakey ollie, I guess. And um, yeah, Chinese ollies though was the one. It was Chinese ollies. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we started on bumps. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> and then so chocolate started. Were you, you were in the skit? I think in Paco in the desert. Did you film that stuff? In Paco, no, I wasn't. Um, I wasn't in that, oh man, I regret to this day not being in that film because they asked me to be a part of the film, but I don't know, I guess I wasn't ready to act. I think that, I thought like Spike Jones was asking me to act, you know, and I was just like, dude, I don't know if I could act. <laughs> I know, actually no, it was more complicated, dude, like, I don't know, like for me, I didn't come, I skated in that video, but the acting part, I wish I would have done now, I didn't back then because, like back then it was kind of crazy, like I, I'm a musician, and like a lot of the instruments that I play, a lot of the music that I play, like like a lot of the South American music, I play, my main instruments are from India, but I also grew up with South American music and like, it was natives, you know, it was Indians. And there's like, I grew, like, I don't know what the hell happened, but I didn't act in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Paco thing. And, I, and the, <laughs> yeah, and it was just because all, all the instruments that I were playing were native instruments, and somehow I thought like I didn't want to take part in some. I don't know, dude. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> you thought it might come out offensive. Yeah, I thought it. Yeah, something like that. Just because I was so passionate about my instruments, and actually at the time, to this day, I'm actually still passionate about it. My instruments, they have a lot to say, you know. And they like a lot of my music, like the musicians that made it, they take it real seriously, and they have a lot to say. And it's like there's like a whole movement and there's like a whole lifestyle to it. And then I guess I was young and I was really passionate. So when I got into these instruments, my life changed, you know, even skating kind of like changed, you know, even it didn't really change. But, you know, it was just like it just took a lot of my life, you know, and I didn't really realize that like 20 years later, these instruments, you know, that I didn't, I didn't realize it would take 20 years for me to realize what I got myself into, you know. And I understand now why skating has kind of been like, you know, I put, it's kind of hasn't been my main thing that I focused on, you know, it's kind of been like my music and my art has been, mostly my music has been a distraction from my skating, which is kind of like, I couldn't balance them right, you know what I mean? The, the, the music, the skating and the art. Yeah, because there were some videos <clears throat> and periods of time where you had like lot, like full parts, lots of coverage, and there were other times where we didn't see a lot. You know, for a while, like, yeah. I forget what time periods, but, you know, maybe sometime before, not Mouse, or, what, I don't know, just certain eras where maybe, where you weren't skating as much, or? Yeah, yeah, it was like that, yeah, because um, I wasn't skating as much just because I couldn't help it, dude. I got into some instruments that, like, that take, like, you got to be born into them since the day you were born, you know, if, like. You got like, you know, your dad has to be uh, one of the musicians. You got to be born into the families. If you're not into, born into the families of these, of these musicians, then you'll never learn how to play these instruments. And luckily as a kid, you know, even before I got into skating, I was already playing these instruments. I, somehow I got these instruments and I learned about the culture. So it was already a strict, you know, like skating, you know, skating, you, you got to put like 20 hours, 20 years you know, of, of, of really to skate master, master, you know? Did, did, were there times where like, because you're getting paid as a pro skater, were there times where like Rick or Mike or whoever would call you and be like, dude, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, no, skating, big time. Or you're well, no, it was a trip because they would call me and tell me that, that, you know, it was a trip. Okay. It's, it's like back then, um, they knew that I was doing a lot of good stuff, you know, that I was, you know, recording music back then I recorded with Beck. I had I had opened up for the Beastie Boys at the ballet at the palace like big things were happening for me back then you know it was a trip but I grew up in Hollywood and um, well big things were happening Rick knew so he wouldn't bother me too much about about you know about skating 
But then at the same time, I, I didn't have enough footage. So yeah, it was just kind of messed up. Like, I couldn't balance out my skating and, and, and my music and how much I wanted to play music and how much I wanted to do the music for my video parts and how, how much I didn't know that it really took, you know, for me to be, for me to do this right. Or maybe I did know and that's why I was, I was hesitant sometimes about, you know, about just not being ready to put out stuff, you know. That's kind of how I felt, you know, I guess. When um, you did this video, the music for which video part, Mouse or? I did the music for, I've actually done the music for all my video parts without even knowing. Like, you know, people just come to my house and they just film me. Like, I can't put, sometimes I can't put my instruments down. And then, you know, and then I just have people filming me and I'm just playing live at my house. And then that becomes my, 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 my soundtrack. And that's how it's been all my life, you know. Like, it, it's been like that. But just, it's just really cool because it really has been like just me at my house, you know. Just you always get me you know, like raw me, like a day in my, uh, in my life. That's how like the chocolate video part, that's how all the parts have been. Like, they just come to my house. We don't even, we just park the car, you know, we just skate to my, to my, to my skate spot and film it. And then at the same time, they film me playing my instrument and then that becomes my video part, you know? That's kind of how all my parts have been. Cause you're I, saying one of the parts that you didn't like how the music came out, that you were pissed that the music was like too low. Too quiet in the mix or something? Yeah, yeah, but I recorded it really bad, so I guess maybe that's why, and I, yeah, I was pissed one time because, because, I don't know, man, I, it's crazy, because, yeah, well, the music didn't come out right, like I wanted it to, but then at the same time, I didn't record it right, so, you know, I don't know, man, like, yeah, one time I got, I got pissed, yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah, whatever, I don't and, know. And so, um... What were the best parts of being a pro skater on chocolate? Or just pro skater in general, what were like your favorite things about it? My favorite things about being a skater, uh, a pro skateboarder pair were just, the, well back then was the fact that like, I can get money and buy instruments and, um, and just, and then travel the world. And then just the fact that skating became like, it became like, you know, like my, my, my tool to, to, to seeing the world and buying instruments was just, that was my favorite part about it. And then, and, um, I mean, besides skating and inventing tricks, there's a lot of parts about skating that I love, but that is still to this day is what I want. And I still, you know, and I'm still trying to, you know, like save is just that, that, you know, how, how skating can be so heavy, you know, for us, you know, it could be such a tool, you know, it could be, it's, it's like people, you know, some skaters have made enough money like like as a doctor would make, even more than a teacher would make, you know. So definitely that part back then, it blew my mind. You know, like the, the fact that I could do that, that I could, that, yeah, man, it's it's insane, you know. It, it, it gave me a lot, skating. And then skating itself, just skating itself is just the funnest thing in the world. It's the most free thing that I know to do to this day. You know? And you were born in another country? Yeah, I was born in another country. I was born in Guatemala. And, uh, um, how old were you when you came here? I was like three and a half, four years old when I came here. Did you have, did you get American citizenship or immediately I, or? No, but um, I, I have, I'm a permanent resident. Like I've been, I've been like legal here. I've worked and work here and I have social security and everything, but I haven't. For some reason, I haven't become a citizen, which is fucked up because I have all the fucking status to become one, you know, and it's and it's dangerous because you can get fucking deported, you know, if I do something wrong, I, I can get deported. But I'm, you know, I'm I'm safe now, right now. No, I need to become a citizen. <laughs> hey, was there a time where you almost got deported? Yeah, there was a time when I almost got deported because uh, I got in trouble with the law, and um, there was a moment in my life where. Um, I, where I was in, tr I was just kind of like in trouble with just with with having too much fun, I would say, you know, and um, and what do you call it? Uh, yeah, it was a like good times. Then they went bad. I grew up in Hollywood, you know. I'm like I grew up in Los Feliz, and um, like Los Feliz, and that's East Hollywood, and then Hollywood is right a couple of blocks. 
to my left, and then back in the 80s and 90s where I grew up, Hollywood was like a big party, you know? And then after I got a lot of money and being pro, it became, it was just crazy, you know? It was just like, it was, skating was like, a, back then it was just a big party that never ended, you know? Skating was, you know? So it was hard for me to like, to just take skating, like to really understand what skating was, you know, like to be a pro skateboarder, you know, because there was back in those days, we were the first ones to be, to be pro like we were, at, at, we were like the first ones of our kind, you know, to be pro like this, and to give, and I had no no clue what I was doing, you know, I just got a lot of money given to me, and and just, and then yeah, and so it was crazy. Like I grew up with a lot of uh, like with a lot of Hollywood, like, you know, freaks, I would say, you know, a lot of Hollywood, like, original rockers and, and, and punkers and stuff like that, you know, and uh, so by the end of the, you know, by the end of my career, in the middle of my career, when I blew up, like, I kind of, like, did a lot of damage, I was drinking a lot, it was just, I guess that's what you did back then, you know, and I kind of fucked up my skateboard career by doing that, you know, I think, you know, because skating, you got to be professional, you got to be an athlete, you know, and, um, and um, yeah, the skating was like, you know, especially back then. I know it's not, the, it's not like that anymore. I, I couldn't imagine how skating is now, but for me, it was like being a rock star without having to fucking have a gig, you know, without having to play. Like we would travel the world, but we didn't have to play a gig, you know? We just drink and fucking party and then whatever. And so then what happened? Did you get retired or get kicked off or what? We got, I got kicked off chocolate. It got, well, I guess, yeah, I definitely did get kicked off chocolate. I didn't even see that coming when it happened. Because at the time, I was trying to make it right, you know. I really was trying to make it right, you know. And, uh, um, and, and just the fact that I wasn't skating enough and the fact that, that uh, for some fucking reason it was just hard to just put a video part together. I get, no, the thing was that, that um, skating was just moving quick, you know. And then it was just, it was kind of weird, you know, because... I mean, it, it, it's it, it um, it's kind of something I'm still working through to this day because you know, like I was such a part of chocolate, and then and then you know the way it ended up, like I feel like you know, like I fucking why did I, how did I fuck that up? You know what I mean? Or how did it go? Where did it go wrong? You know? And uh, and and I totally understand. I I see it now, and it was just like it was just hard to balance all that. But I'm really you know like. The fact that it happened, you know, is is just like is is amazing, you know. And and like now that I go back and look back, I'm like, damn, like you know, it was like I'm so happy that it happened, you know. It's like being a part of 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 it was it'll never happen again the way it happened, you know. Like the way we were back then, like that, the, yeah, it, it just won't happen again, you know. And then to not be a part of it, does that make you mad at them, or does that suck, or or is or is it okay after a while? Um, yeah, after a while, uh, you know, after a while, because I see where I played my part in it, you know, so, yeah, it does, you know, like, like, yeah, you know, at the same time, it does and it does. There's good parts to, to my, my story, and there's really good, there's really good parts, and there's bad parts, you know, but the fact, you know, now that I see it clearly, those guys love me, and I love them, because they gave me a chance, and we, we were, we started a good thing, I just think that what happened, which is what, you know, which I, what I'm really happy to, that, that it even happened, was that chocolate was a really good idea and it had a really good feeling. And, you know, and like, and it was, a, it was like a thing that just happened and it just, it was so good that it just, it just went on its own, you know, it kind of just took off from like, originally from what, what, you know, because my, the idea in the beginning was to do art and just to be a family, you know, just, and then just to bring like, my brother was a part of it, and then Rudy, it was a guy. We were all like a family, and that's why we even started, even Girl on Chocolate started, because we were becoming more of a family, you know? And then, um, so, you know, well, go it, it doesn't bother me, because I'm still alive, and I'm still skating today, and I see, you know, like, I see how a lot of people have ended up, you know, and then, or I see how most of the normal people are, and they just never made anything They've never created it. They've been a part of something so cool, you know. To invent a trick is like, is amazing, you know. Yeah. Um, and I guess going back, were you pretty tight with Keenan Milton? 
I was I wasn't that tight with uh, with Keenan Milton as as tight as I wanted to be as tight as we were beginning to be, yeah. because um, because they came from New York, you know, and they were like, yeah, no, I, I wasn't, and I, I I was beginning to be, and they just that got cut short, and that just oh my god, that that's like, that's what just makes me happy that I was a part of, you know, with him, and that's what makes me look back that that there's nothing in the world that is more that is more meaningful than what we did back then. And the fact that I took a part of that, that I was a part of making all that happen, is, is there's nothing more important than that, you know? And I really wish that it was gonna happen. We were gonna start, everything was gonna, it was gonna be inevitable back then for me to get back on chocolate. I know it because we were a family and then all of us in chocolate, we all, everybody went through their rough times and then if they wanted to get back on, all they had to do was skate and just, you know, be there, you know. And I, I, I was really trying to do that. And, you know, and that's the, that's the, you know. And so, yeah, you know, I knew that we were, we, we all, it was going to happen. It, it was just weird, you know, like a lot of stuff was happening back then. And then when I got kicked off chocolate, when it ended, it just, I, you know, I made other choices that, that really just made my situation worse, you know. And then once you get into to those misunderstandings and then you get in a situation like that, it just only gets worse, you know. You mean with the team? I mean with, like, the company or do you mean with, like... With the like, company and just with, with, um, with the company and then, yeah, with other companies and just with skate with my career itself, you know, because... Because I was supposed to blow up. Chocolate was like, you know, was our idea. They gave us that chance for us to blow up. And chocolate was my main, you know. The only thing that, that, that I get bummed out about chocolate, not bummed out about chocolate, is just the fact that it, was, that it just left my hands really quick. Where I couldn't be more input to, to the way I think, you know. Because I have such a passion about my music. And just the way I think. And then what I know that can be done with a skateboard, you know, and, and with publicity and, and the fact that you actually can reach out to the whole world, you know. I've always, I, I, I've, I feel like since day one, I know this, I was born to do something good in, in my life, you know, and, and, and I feel like, you know, that's why I'm a musician, and that's why I'm an artist, and like, you know, so even since, even back then, I already knew I was an artist, I already knew I wanted to do something really good and memorable, you know, so that's kind of, that's kind of why I kept on jumping teams and that's why I wanted to be with Chocolate, and that's why Chocolate happened the way it happened, where we actually had our own art, and that's why it had all this. Like, when we started Chocolate, Chocolate was sharks. Like, the paintings were sharks and trees and, and animals, and, and, you know, Chocolate had this really positive, like, healthy, styly, you know, flavor thing that had good, nothing but just solid, dope, classy type of skating is what I wanted you know and the music was really classy the the art we were doing the art my brother was doing art so it was like this this thing that we were it was this artist kind of movement that I was trying to start even back then and then when when that and that's what happened that's what happened that's happened to my whole career that's what I feel that has happened to my career, whole career is that I have I wasn't either ready to do my music or I wasn't ready to collaborate and 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 uh, um and, and show it the way I really wanted to, you know? I've never had the chance. There's always something been, there's always been something wrong. Either my shoes weren't right, or whether, you know, I didn't have the right board that day, or whatever it was, you know? Something has always been wrong in my career as a skateboarder, you know? And, um, and it's no big deal. It's, I see that it's just because I'm really complicated. It's, really, it's a really complicated thing, you know? And, and um, so I'm just, my thing now is just, I'm just happy that I, what I worry about today is that I could skate. Yeah. If I can skate today, that's all I'm worried about. And I can skate today, I'm healthy today, and that's all I'm worried about. And that's all I worry about. And that's, and that's you know, that's, that's, that's yeah. my, my goal. Yeah, before the Supreme video, I was, um, I was done for like a while. I was like, I was out of, I was really out of skateboarding for a while because I just, I ended up like, uh, just like, you know, with some, some bad habits, you know, like, like I just ended up, you know, just drugs, <laughs> whatever, or just, you know, being on, yeah, fucking, yeah, that's, unfortunately, that's a part of my story, where I did, I did a lot of, a lot of partying, you know, and, um, and, um, so that took like a long time to get well. 
to fix and then to get healthy again and then and then to study then um and then oh yeah what happened was i started doing art with with uh with chad and uh chad hit me up and then we started working on art again and then um that was really cool because that um we actually had a place where we could do art and then um I got my, my art came back up again and I started seeing, you know, like how important it really is to have a space to do art, to actually get good at art. And then art got me back into skating and then skating got me back into music. And then it just started all happening again. And then, um, and I got really tight with Chad. So that, that was really cool. And, um, and then, um, and then, yeah, that's how, that's how, you know, we had a spot on Fairfax by by supreme and that's kind of how i started hanging out with the supreme guys again and then um yeah and then that's just how it happened and i just started skating with those guys and how many how long did it take you to film the stuff in the supreme video the stuff at supreme video took me like it took me a couple of weekends to do it and then uh but there was a lot more footage and um i don't know it just it, it didn't take much it was just a couple of weekends i would say you know and um yeah, but uh, whatever. I don't want to talk about it because there was a lot more footage, but it never gets used. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, it was fucking awesome. But I, I yeah, yeah, um, it was awesome. Yeah, I didn't even have no clue. I'm, I'm sorry, but to say that, I had no clue how important it was. I didn't even know how important that was. I just know that uh, I saw ha uh, Javier. I love skating with Javier. Every time I see Javier, Javier uh, Nunez, uh, I just want to skate, you know. And then Jason Dill, and then I saw a guy. So I didn't even have no idea how, how, how important that was. I had no clue. And then I just saw, I ran into those guys and I was skating good. And then we were just like, let's go skate. I didn't even know who Bill was. I didn't even know who, like, who Bill, uh, Fat, Fat Bill was. And then <laughs> I didn't even, like, I met him that day when I started filming, you know? And then like, so we were, I was just like, yeah, let's go skate. And we, were, we had so much fun skating. And then after I realized that how important it really was and how big Supreme really was. I guess because I just been so out of skating that like I didn't even really know, you know. And even like the music, like I said, like they just filmed me playing one day, and then you know they just it just came out, like you know. Yeah, it's just it's it's cool. It's pretty cool how that happened. Would you? Do you think you'll ever do another video part? Hell yeah! That's a, that's what. Uh, yeah, like I said, the the video part. It was just I was just like I wasn't even ready to skate. I just had fun every trick that I did that day. I never practiced, I just went out, we just went out and had fun. And maybe that's why it was so much fun. Like the no-handed air walk? Like the no-handed air walk, yeah. That, I never, I've never seen that before. That was the first day I even ever tried that trick in my life. And you, Jason Dill told me to do that trick. I was like, what, you're crazy, like, what are you talking about, you know? And then I was like, what? Okay, manual, and then no-handed air walk, okay. And yeah, I just did it, it, it was funny. Do you work a long time on a trick you want to get, or do you try it a few times if you don't get it? Uh, I do both. I do. I, I. I. I'm not. I don't. I'm not afraid to sit there all day and practice a manual trick. For, you know, for a whole week if I have to, or you know, or or the type of skating where you just go out and do it, which is the funnest type, or you just in the moment like, ah, oh, I can land this kickflip, and you do it. You know that there's something about that that you know, ah, uh, you know, the, I guess trying it so hard and staying on it, which can give it some kind of coolness to it. But no, I, I like, I, no, I'm tired of doing that, you know. I'm tired of going out and skating just like, like that. I like to prepare, you know. I, I like to, skating is gnarly, dude. Skating's not like, you know, like, okay, like, like for example, like, I, I can play soccer. I just, any day, I can fucking kill it in soccer. I can just go play soccer. Anytime you want to play soccer, boom, boom, ready, go make a goal, you know. But... A soccer player, even a pro soccer player, can't just get on a skateboard and go skate, you know? And then you don't see a soccer player climbing on top of a, of a goalie and jumping off a goalie to you know, make a header, you know, doing something crazy like that. So, you know, it's like, I don't even know what my point was with that. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what do you think you'd film a part for? Do you, you have any idea? Oh, you're asking if I want to skate? Yes, if of you course. want to do a video part. Yeah, of course I want to do a video part. I, yeah, I was saying that I want to do a video part, yes. Really? But I want to focus on it. I want to do it right. I finally want to do a whole video part fucking right. Like, you know. Because nowadays it seems like people that film videos, it takes them like two years. Like Guy Mariano with Fully Flared, it's like 
three years of filming or two years of filming. But I think in a long time ago, it might have only been like, you know, a couple of weeks or a month or six months. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, that vid, the, the Supreme video, the, 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 um, the clothes changes that you see in it, that's how many days it took me to do that, that, that video part. The, um, so whatever, I changed my clothes five times, you know. And if you see it, you know, all the tricks are with it, you know, no more than that. So it took me like five days to, to film that whole part, which is, which is an actual part, you know. I guess it was an actual part. But I remember back in the day with like the Powell videos, that was dude, one day or two days, maybe three days the most, and you filmed the whole video part, you know. That's how we did it back then with, with, uh, with Powell and Stacy Peralta. So like, yeah, you know, I, I guess I, I, you know what's crazy? All my video parts have been like that. Yeah. If you look at my video parts, you know, I haven't had that many, but all of them, all the ones that are on, on, on YouTube that you could, if you see them, they, they're just, they have that feeling where just, they're just like all, you know, like lines and you just go on a skate and do them like that. You know, they didn't take, didn't take that long to do them. Um, when you look at the, um, like Pretty Sweet or Chocolate Now and see the, the team riders, how do you feel about, like, how do you feel about the changes Chocolate's had since you've left? And especially because some of the skaters are so different, you know, like Raven T Terche or, um, Elijah Burrell, you know, like, it seems like a long way from like Ben Sanchez, Jamil Randall. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do I feel about that? I, um, well, yeah, personally, um, I don't know because I kind of, I haven't really been in, in uh, I don't know, I, I haven't really like studied it enough, you know, because, um, I don't know, I, but I definitely, as, a, as, as you know, as for me, I definitely have like a whole vision of complete vision of what my skating should be, what the type of skating should be like. And, you know, and not should be like, but what I like to see in skating, you know? And I haven't even really like paid attention to, you know, even to Raven Triche or, unfortunately, I haven't just because I'm so busy and I just live like, you know, another life now, you know, that I don't really watch like the skate, ever. I haven't really studied their skating as much, you know, and, uh, um, and you know, but I do see the little that I do see, I see it all, in, I, I see it all in skating a little bit where it's not like it used to be, like I'm saying, like, it's not like it used to be, it's not like, like Ben Sanchez, it's not like Keenan Milton, it'll never be like that, you know, and that's what, and that's where I, I'm really happy with, you know, that I, I was a part of that, you know, of something that you will never happen again, you know, mm -hmm. like, like, just, oh my God, like uh, um, Mark Gonzalez, that will never happen again, you know, something that never, ever, ever again, you know, what is it going to take for something that creative and that artistic and that awesome, I don't know, man, or, or Keenan Milton, how is that, you're never going to see that again, that was like one, one people, one of a kind people that just will never happen again and I'm really happy that I was a part of those days because they don't make them like that anymore.